my name is Rachel and I work at the Vancouver Community Library. Today I'm going to show you how you can use cardboard from your recycling to make a moth. Alright, let's get started. The supplies you'll need are cardboard from a box, a flimsier cardboard, I procured mine from a cereal box, a pencil, a pair of scissors, some craft glue, and this is optional, a pad of paper. I like to sketch out my ideas before I draw them on my cardboard. And some wire. This is also optional. I procured mine from a produce tie. I'm just going to strip off the paper to get the wire. I'm going to design my moth. I'm only drawing half of the body because when I make my template, I'm going to cut these shapes out and then just reverse them. Okay, so that's my idea. I'm going to create my template now. So I'm going to use my flimsy cardboard to draw these general ideas that I sketched out on here. I'm going to cut those out and then that's going to help me to trace on to my cardboard, which I will then create my moth out of. A tip when you're cutting is you move your hand that has the paper more than you move your scissors. You're mostly just going up and down, sort of like a crab pinching its claw, and then this hand is the one that's doing the driving. This is my cat Persephone. I call her Percy for short. She may help periodically throughout this project but I'm going to try and set her down for now. Okay, so I have all my template pieces cut out. I'm going to arrange them to see if I like how they look together. Now I'm not so sure about this shape. I feel like maybe I need to lower this part down a little bit. That looks better. And here's Percy again. She's very curious and loves to know what I'm working on. All right, Percy. Now I'm going to use my template pieces to trace onto my cardboard, which I will then cut out and glue together to actually assemble my moth. When I am cutting out my body, I like the lines to go up and down. Same with the antennae. I can then put my wire through the corrugated part, which may be hard to see, but if you have cardboard, you'll be able to see it pretty well. So I'm going to take my pencil again, and I am going to trace my pieces. When you're tracing out your pieces, you want to make sure you have two of everything, two bodies, two antennae, two upper wings, and two lower wings. Now when I am tracing out my wings, I want to make sure that I am getting both the right wing and the left wing. And how I do that is by flipping my cardboard over to get a mirror image. So that way, here's my right wing, and here's Penelope, and here is my left wing. And it looks exactly the same, just mirrored.
Okay, now I'm going to roughly cut these out and then trim them. Because this cardboard is really thick, it can be difficult to cut out. You may need help, or if you want to bypass using this thick cardboard, that's okay. You're always welcome to make your moth out of this flimsy cardboard. All right, now that I have all my pieces, I'm going to arrange them like a puzzle. Now I'm gonna glue them together. But first I'm going to get my wire ready for my antennae. So I'm going to strip the paper. And I'm gonna start gluing. And this is where the corrugated part is really helpful, the little tunnels in the cardboard, because that's where I'm going to feed my wire. And just fits right inside there. looks good. So now is the hard part, letting it dry, because it can take a couple hours. Here is one I made earlier that is still in the process of drying. So while you're waiting, you might make a snack, read a book, or do some other fun activity. Then later, we can start painting our moth. showed you how to design your own moth, then create the template for it, and then assemble your pieces to create your cardboard moth. And in this video, we are going to then use paint or the medium that you have at home, which could be crayon, color pencil, oil pastel, and we're going to decorate our moth. I just wanted to share that there is no reason why your moth needs to resemble mine. In fact, there are over 160,000 species of moths in the world. And if you want to know more cool moth facts, you can actually go to our website, www.fbrl.org, and look at our e-resources. I was checking out National Geographic Kids, and there's so many cool facts. It's like the actual books, but online. You can like even flip through the pages. Before we start painting, I wanted to go over some of the design elements that you could include in your moth, bearing in mind that these are just suggestions. So the first thing I like to do is fill the entire canvas, and by canvas I mean your moth. If you only include small elements or partial elements, it may make the moth look incomplete. The next thing I like to think about is the biology of the moth. So moths have repeating patterns and the image is mirrored from each side. So if you think of your moth being divided down the middle, what you see on this side is gonna be repeated on the other side. They are also excellent mimickers, so you may wanna incorporate some of the ways that they use mimicry to avoid predators. For example, maybe a circle that could resemble an eye or speckling that could resemble bird poop. These things either frighten or disgust certain predators. The medium I'm using for this project is acrylic paint. Here I'm mixing brown, yellow, and gold. This color will become my base, which I'll then apply to my moth. Okay, now that I have the base coat on, I'm going to let that dry and then we can start building up the different decorative parts of the moth. Let's... If 
you don't have a paint palette, that's okay. I often use an old lid from a container to mix my colors on. Now I'm going to figure out where I want to put this color. And keeping in mind that whatever I do on this half of the body, I'm going to then do on the other half of the body. As I'm These kind of resemble eyes in my opinion. So I think I'm going to continue to work on that idea of building up some mock eyes. A moss wings are made out of tiny scales. These scales give it the shimmering effect. After a moth hatches from its cocoon, it'll spend its adult life not eating. In fact, some species do not develop mouths. So I've just been continuing to add and decorate to my moth. I decided to add these sort of eyelashes to my eyes to be quite alarming if you know, I was trying to scare off a predator with my moth. And then I flip those over here. And you can see they're not exactly alike. There are differences because it's really difficult to mirror, but that's okay. I think it lends to the charm. Also, if you look really closely at nature and life, you'll see lots of small differences. Look, Percy is here to visit us again. All right, Percy, let me put my paintbrush down. She has a really good habit of putting her tail in my paint, so that's why I usually hold on to it, because it's like, oh, you're gonna start painting yourself and everything around you. Yeah. Do you ever start painting and then it accidentally goes outside the line so you keep correcting it? That's what's happening right now. That's okay. When it's finished, no one will know it was an accident. They'll think you intended it to look like that. The only reason why you know is because I let you in on that secret. I feel like Bob Ross had the perfect um, way of looking at it. He called them happy accidents. After adding the black, I decided it had sort of a glam rock feel to it, so I decided to incorporate these little stars to really glam it up. So now that my wings are done, I'm going to work on the body and antennae of my moth. I would suggest you practice and, and sort of experiment with your brush strokes. You can get some really interesting texture by making your lines really fat or really thin and layering them on top of each other. Now we're gonna finish with the antennae. Believe it or not, moths don't have noses, but they are great at smelling. They have great sense of smell. So how do you smell if you don't have a nose? It comes from the antennae. And there you have it. This is the moth that I've designed. And Percy is coming to check out what we made. What do you think, Percy? Is this a good looking moth? Thank you for joining me. See you next time.